From the time I was a boy, my heart belonged in Africa. But who was I in the face of this vast continent? I was just a young missionary whose vision did not stretch to the horizon, but only to a small flock of people. Then the Lord gave me a vision of a blood-washed Africa. I was to take the gospel from Cape Town to Cairo, me, a small missionary. The key was faith, to trust the Lord and to act according to what you believe. So that is what I did, and what followed would sometimes astonish me. The results could not be credited to any man. In John 20, verse 29, Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Faith resting on seeing needs to continue to see to keep it going. A seeing kind of faith soon with us. We live by faith, not by sight. Faith must rest on the daily meditation of God's word. Joshua is an example. He had a success at Jericho, which boosted his faith, but then he failed at AI. He was badly shaken. He had to turn to God and remember again the word of the Lord to Moses. God showed him he must not turn from the word of God either to the right or to the left. Then he had victory. That is always the case. Faith is the victory. Faith that comes by the word of God. God had called me as a young boy to one day be a missionary in Africa. Mm. So throughout my teenage years, I was very much aware of that. It gripped me so much. My whole life began to have this direction. So I just lived for the moment to be old enough to be accepted at Bible college. It should not just be a Bible college, it should be a missionary college. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the age of 19, the young people of my church made a special summer trip to England. Mm -hmm. We were invited there by a church in Liverpool. We had a wonderful time there. And there in Liverpool, one of the pastors came to me and said, Reinhard, what are you going to do mm -hmm. with your life? Oh, I said, I have a call from God. I'm going to preach the gospel in Africa. So he said, oh, I know a fantastic missionary Bible college. You should go and attend that. Mm. And he gave me the name. And because I had that missionary call, and this was now a missionary college, I felt this was the right mixture. Mm -hmm. I applied to be accepted as a student there, but was turned down. The reason? I spoke no English. No English. <laughs> I couldn't converse at all. So then I was very much uh, discouraged. Oh, I thought, well, did I, did I not hear God right? Mm -hmm. The point is, at that time, my father, who was a pastor in North Germany, had a visiting preacher from Britain. That visitor said, what is Reinhardt doing? Oh, my father said, he, he just uh, uh, applied to go to a Bible college and he was turned down. Mm -hmm. Oh, he said, I know a college in Britain, uh, um, which is excellent. Uh, and he mentioned that very college, mm -hmm. the very college that had just rejected my application. Wow. Mm. Wow. My father said, no, they don't want him. They turned him down. And he said, oh no, I know the principal face to face. I will write. He wrote and they reversed the decision. I was accepted. Mm -hmm. When I arrived at the college, I found out that faith was not just taught in a classroom with a blackboard and a piece of chalk. But faith was their lifestyle. They lived it. Yes. 
uh, for instance, the director came into the prayer meeting and said, this Friday we've got to pay the coal bill. It's 1,000 pounds. We don't have money. Let's pray and trust God for the money. Mm -hmm. And I thought by myself, how is that going to happen? How shall that work? Friday came and in walked the director and said, God has answered our prayer. Amen. God has delivered us. Amen. That's the very term mm. they always used. And I said, what? I want to become a man of faith myself. Mm. They stressed there. They said, this is the school of faith. So if you learn to trust God in the school, you can trust him anywhere in the world. That's right. And I said, I want to become a man of faith. I want to learn this lesson. And I think that was the most precious and important lesson I learned right there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do I start? I thought before I can trust God to supply my needs, I've got to give all my money away. How shall he supply me with something that I don't need? Okay. Mm -hmm. So there was a passing missionary, and I don't know how many pounds I had, I think 20 pounds or so. And I thought, I give him 19 pounds. <laughs> and one pound I keep as an iron reserve in case I urgently need toothpaste. Mm -hmm. you know? So I gave that missionary 19 pounds, and one pound I just kept, you know, and then I started to pray and the Lord said, no, no, no. What about the one pound? I said, Lord, it's toothpaste. He said, <laughs> <laughs> he said can't you really trust me? That one pound is the proof you won't really trust me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I let go of that one pound. I said, Lord, I'm now really empty. I emptied myself. And I want to learn to trust you. So I received an invitation to go and preach at a children's service at the beach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in those days when they invited you, they never paid you a penny, not even the bus fare. Mm -hmm. So I had the single fare, but not the return mm -hmm. fare. And my, one of my fellow students, my friend there, I said to him, let's go together. He said, I have no money for the bus fare. I said, I have a single fare for both of us. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And then and then what he said? I said, let's trust God for the return fare. Let's test him and see if it works for us, what works for our director. So we went to the beach. We had a wonderful little children's service. The time was up and I said bye-bye. And I walked towards the bus stop with every step. I prayed, oh Lord, please send the money. I need I need the bus for a buck to the college because I dare not be late. That was the next thing. <laughs> Please send the money. And then all of a sudden I saw a pastor of one of the big churches there. Mm -hmm. I knew him, he knew me. And when he saw me, he said, hey boys, how are you? I thought by myself, thank God, here comes my answer to prayer. Mm -hmm. If God can speak to anyone here at this speech, it must be the man of God. Mm -hmm. He surely can listen to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. so he invited us for a cup of tea, and uh, he told us about all the wonderful answers to prayer he had. And time came to pay for the tea. He opened his purse. I saw all the money in there. My eyes nearly fell into it, <laughs> you know. I saw so much money there, and I thought, oh, I only need the bus fare. Mm. Just 10 shillings. He gave me nothing. Mm. I said nothing, of course. I was wanted to learn to trust God and not man. So we rose and walked again to the bus stop. It was now high time to return. Mm -hmm. And I was praying, I said, Lord, where's the money? I need the return fare, I need the return fare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Suddenly a woman came running around the bend and she grabbed my arm, put something into my hand and she said, take this, this is for you. And I opened it, my hand, 
it was the exact bus fare for wow. both of us. Wow. Oh, this was my first answer to prayer mm -hmm. with regard to support. And I thought I had learned a mighty lesson. Mm -hmm. It was not the money. Money comes and goes. Money is nothing. Mm -hmm. It comes mm -hmm. and it goes. But that experience is indelible in my heart and life. Mm. And I realized, if God can supply my needs in a country where nobody knows me, mm. he can do that in Africa as well, mm. where nobody knows me. Mm. In Luke 17, verse 5, the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Christians have wanted that ever since. Faith in bulk. Yes. So what is the reply of Jesus? If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Mm -hmm. That must have puzzled the apostles. They wanted big faith, but he spoke of the smallest thing they knew. Perhaps you've never seen the mustard seed. You may need your glasses for one. The people to whom Jesus spoke knew seeds very well. Mm -hmm. It was an agricultural society. Jesus spoke their farming language. Today we are a high-tech society and our expressions are scientific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today Jesus would use our common speech. He spoke 2,000 years ago about the mustard seed, a small thing with mighty potency. Maybe today the Lord would talk about a microchip or fuse to illustrate mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. teaching. If you have faith as small as an electric fuse, you could transplant a tree from soil to sea. Like the mustard seed, the value of a fuse is not in breadth or length. The key is conductivity. Faith transfers the power of God to where it is needed. Let me illustrate it like this. Great power lines stretch across a whole country carrying perhaps 110,000 volts on a single cable. Day and night, the huge power turbines are feeding the vast electrical power grid. Then, in our homes, a tiny sliver of wire is often the difference between light, warmth and energy and sitting in a dark, cold room. The vital link is the fuse. If fuse is made of metal, such as silver wire, which offers low resistance to current. Low resistance means high conductivity. Translated into the spiritual, the lower our resistance to the word of God, the higher the power rating. The higher our resistance, and disobedience to the word, the lower the operational power of God. A fuse with high resistance would either carry no power at all, or else soon blow. If we say we believe in the word, but disobey it, we negate our faith. It blows the fuse. The power of God is little when the word of God means little to us. Whatever else may be true, one thing is absolutely beyond contradiction. It is that Christianity is a power religion or it is nothing. Yes. To be believers, we should know in what we believe and who we believe. The most basic lesson is that we must take the word of God at face value. Without knowing God's will, faith is impossible. The word 
is the eternal will of God. To question scripture is to question the only guide we have and to question God. And so, as we see, our faith in God's word is directly proportionate to the power of God working through us. We can generate power by anything we do, music, worship, or atmosphere. It is impossible for Christians even to meet in his name without Christ being there in power. If it were our work to produce the power of God, we would be the power generators, but Christ gave us power. We are not called to go into the entire world with our own little power plant so that folk will think how wonderful we are. Um, we can parade our own charisma and make the sparks fly for an hour, but soon our generator will run out of fuel and begin coughing and dying. We are not generators, but Conductors. Jesus Christ is the fullness who fills all in all. Mm -hmm. We are channels, not the source. God does not need any of our energy dynamos. He has his own, two of them, right here on earth. The cross and the empty tomb. Power flows from them through those sources day and night without power cuts or breakdowns. The voltage is unfailing and reliable. There is no fluctuating flow from the Father of Lights with whom is no variableness. Here's our full equipment. The spiritual energies of the cross and the resurrection power lines of the Word of God, the fuse of our faith, the vital link. The greatness of God, the greatness of the work of Christ, the greatness of the Word of God are all there. But without faith, as small as a fuse wire, none of that greatness avails. The circuit is broken power bridge is down. If the faith fuse fails, the dynamic of God is defused and will be refused by those to whom we preach. Mm. Take the word, put in the faith fuse, and the power of God comes through. There will be light, warmth, energy, salvation, healing, strength, and blessing. Our faith is no towering sensation that everybody sees and gasps. It is the hidden fuse, but by it, the energies of heaven flow into the world. Anyone can believe God when God is already moving. Real faith acts when God doesn't seem to be moving. Understand this, God loves the man and woman who gamble on his help. This is the formula for triumph, blessing and revival.